Hi, it's Christopher Watkin here from Lincolnshire Freemasons, and I'm joined today by Stuart Piercy, who's been a Freemason now for 20 years in the wonderful town of Scunthorpe. Thank you for joining me today, Stuart. You're more than welcome. Pleasure to be here, Chris. Thank you. Today, I'd like to talk about your story, about why you joined Freemasonry, and then why subsequently you went on and took your Masonic career a little bit further by joining the Holy Royal Arch. So what I'd like to start with, Stuart, is, is when did you become a Freemason? Well, it was a, one of these sliding doors moments. Uh, in a previous life, I worked in the steel industry and part of my tasks uh, involved being the secretary of a learned society. And we arrived at a point when uh, uh, we, uh, we went through the millennium and we had a ball, massive event in a tent, hundreds of people dancing to the RAF uh, regiment dance band, which I had a big part in organizing president of the institute at the time was a Freemason and we had long conversations after the event in his office in which he told me about Freemasonry and I went I've got a lot to do with it is he still talking I really ought to be somewhere else and then one thing led to another and uh, he and uh, a good friend of mine who were, were Freemasons people who I respected suggested I'd like to join so I did and here I am. So you joined roughly 20 years ago in the St. Lawrence 2078 Lodge in Scunthorpe. Uh -huh. um, did you have any misapprehensions about Freemasonry? Because again, there's a lot of chitter chatter out there. Or did you go with that, you know? There is. Um, but I was persuaded, not persuaded to join, but convinced that it was the right thing to do because the guys who were proposing and seconding me were people that I had enormous respect for. Uh, and I thought if, if it works for them, then uh, it, it should work for me as well. I say had, uh, one of them, one of the guys has since passed on. The other one is still a significant figure in Scumlord Freemason. He's still got a lot of respect for him. Great guy. So what did you get out of, what do you get out of Freemasonry? And just, you know, just generally, you know, more on an emotional side. The emotional side. Freemasonry, it's less so now uh, that I, I've moved up within the province, but in the early days, it was a great relief from the stresses of the day. It was an opportunity to, if you like, to suspend reality for a few hours, to get involved with something that was completely different from the day job, with like-minded, supportive people, and then to have a, a meal and a drink afterwards with them. And that it kind of recharged me for getting back into the the day-to-day -day, uh, day, day job the, the life in general i mean so a lot of people use words like camaraderie and feeling part of something bigger did you feel those things yeah I and mean, it's always supportive the the uh, the best illustration i can give of that is when i went through the chair and we ran our ladies evening we invited family members and one of those family members uh, expressed to me towards the end of the evening something that I guess I'd been aware of but hadn't really thought about and he said he'd had a wonderful evening he'd never before been in a room that felt so welcoming full of kind people that he felt he could drop into a conversation with at any time uh, and that was a perception of somebody from outside uh, the craft and, and therefore perhaps of more value but yeah certainly there is camaraderie you meet people that you would never have met otherwise uh people whose uh paths just don't cross with your own okay so, united, united by freemasonry okay so freemasonry is big into charity why, why is charity important to you Stuart? oh why is it important to me because there are an awful lot of people who uh don't have the same advantages as the rest of us and we're no different to them at all when you strip away the uh, the luxuries we have with our 21st century lifestyles people who don't have still have skills and abilities and if we can get involved with something that has the right kind of outcome something that will enhance their lives in whatever way then that's got to be good it doesn't take a great deal of time necessarily it can take as much time as you want it doesn't take as much money as uh, uh, it doesn't take a lot of money you can put in as much as you want or uh, next to nothing if you don't want to but the point is that every contribution 
will make a difference to somebody, will make somebody's life better. And it's always worth in these things looking at the outcome. Whenever you give to charity, it's not about the money you give. It's about the, the, the recipient at the end and how their life is better. OK, good. Now, being a Freemason, you, you, you join a Freemasons Lodge and then you work your way, way up to the pecking order to eventually you, you become, you sit in the chair, the chair is known as the Worshipful Master. What, what year did you become Worshipful Master? 2010. 2010. So it took you a good 10 years to get up there. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Do you, uh, this is one for the Freemasons watching. What was your favourite job on the run up to that? Favourite job on the way? Oh. Senior warden. It was a place I felt, if such a thing were to happen, that I could retire to, almost. Uh, I really enjoyed being senior warden. Interesting. Uh, would it surprise you that most people say junior deacon at that question? No, not really. Uh, for two reasons. One, it's a great role. And two, I've seen them say it on the videos. So, yeah, I I'm aware of that. And, yeah, that is a... A significant step because you suddenly become very much involved in the ceremonies that we work through. Uh, you've got a key role there and of course there is the contact with with the candidate uh, which is significant for the candidate and you, you can form very good friendships at that point. Oh goodness me you're asking me trick questions now. Uh, that must have been in 2012 or thereabouts. Interestingly, so you, you, joined, you joined after after you going through the chair. Do you wish yes, you joined earlier than that? No, I don't think so. Uh, you can go in. Strictly speaking, the, uh, there's a little bit of ritual that says you, you can uh, become uh, a chapter Freemason or a companion in the Holy Royal Arch uh, four weeks and upwards after having been uh, made a Master Mason. But that for me felt kind of like galloping ahead. Um, having got into the chair and moved through that, then there were other things that I needed to do to experience Freemasonry through the fact that I've been through the chair, which in its way gives it a different, gives you a different perspective as well. And so it didn't feel something that I wanted to rush in and do straight away. You need to take all of these things in their time when it feels right for you, because if you don't, then you don't necessarily get as much from it and you perhaps want to resign. I'm with you. So, so really, what you're saying is, is that don't feel pressured into joining the Holy Royal Arch, which is the fourth degree of Freemasonry. Do it in your own time and, and do it when it's right for you. And Absolutely. And just because your arm's being twisted by the Holy Royal Arch representative in your lodge, shouldn't mean you should be jumping in. Obviously, that, we'll, we'll keep that between me and you because we don't want, that, that only start complaining that we're, we're putting people off. We're not. But that's the important thing about Freemasonry. There's no point in rushing someone through if they're going to just uh, th throw the rattle out of their pram or throw the baby out with the bathwater. If, if they just because they could end up giving everything up, couldn't they? Yeah, they could. It's also worth pointing out that although um, Royal Arch chapters are connected to Freemasons lodges and uh, share a number with them, you don't have to join the chapter that belongs to your, your own lodge. You can move to another centre if you so choose, which is good because it brings you into contact with other people. Uh, yeah. And if you really want to do, there's no reason to stop you uh, moving and joining a chapter in another province. I'm with you, I'm with you. I mean, I, I'm, in, I'm from the Grantham Centre and there's five lodges and, and two um, Holy Royal Arches uh, chapters as they're also called. And again, it's just your opinion on which one you want to want to join different groups of people. So, OK. What do you get out of being in Holy Royal Arch that the, the, the first three degrees or the craft, as it's called, doesn't give you? Well, let's take a broader view. If you if you think about the third degree ceremony and everybody who's done it will understand what I'm going to say next. Uh, and those that haven't will perhaps get a, a flavour for it. But whilst it's a Masonic ceremony, it still has all the feel of a, a Shakespearean tragedy, of a, a, a TV box set, if you like. I mean, there, there's a brutal murder, there's a whodunit, there's a manhunt, and it all ends on a kind of an EastEnders duff, duff, duff moment. Quite downbeat, uh, if, you, if you pause and think about what's actually been said. If you move on to chapter, which according to the Book of Constitutions, is part of being a Master Mason. 
Uh, I'll, I'll share those words in a minute. I, I've written them down here because I can't remember them. But that's the, the happy ending, if you like. It's a, it's a different dimension and, and you're moving forward to another stage in the same story. And the difference for me is that it, you're able to be more reflective in it. Um, the numbers of people taking part tend to be smaller than a craft lodge and there is there are moments for reflection and it teaches you more about yourself let me just uh, before I, I go on to that let me just clarify the points from the book of constitutions which i've written here um pure and ancient freemasonry consists of three degrees and no more those of the entered apprentice fellow craft and master mason including the supreme order of the holy royal arch so that means it is tied together as part of the, uh, the third degree, certainly for me, uh, in any event. Just an excuse to go out, though, on uh, another night, isn't it? <laughs> I, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't, I, 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 yes, <laughs> I couldn't deny it. I mean, the, the meetings are uh, less frequent, so the subs are uh, less expensive, uh, but that's kind of a, a minor degree. Uh, it's, I don't know, I, it's made given me the opportunity to be in company with a lot of more like-minded people and it takes the the notion of brotherhood to another level to companionship if you think about it the the first three degrees teach you how to live your life the arrival your, your life and what will come to all of us in the end our death and we can think about all of those things the holy royal arch describes more about how you might go on between those beginning and end points. Uh, and I've found it to be a more reflective uh, degree. I've got a more reflective relationship within myself. It helps me to deal with the, I won't say the grief, but the, the annoyances and irritations of day-to-day -day life. I'm able to be more at ease with myself and I don't know. Okay. More in harmony with other people. But if you join the Holy Royal Arch, which is the fourth degree, is that not another thing where it could almost, oh, but then you need to join the fifth and the sixth and the seventh and the tenth and the whatever. You could keep going on, couldn't you? You could be out every night if you want to. You could, but hopefully if you've delayed your arrival in chapter, you've learned that you shouldn't feel pressured. There is nothing to be gained by becoming, this is a personal comment, nothing to do with the province, but becoming ceremony fodder. Somebody saying to you, would you like to join X? And you say, well, you're all right. Oh, good. Come on Tuesday then. You're the candidate. Whoa, hang on a minute. That's, that's, that's too fast. We don't want to be doing it that way. One needs to take a measured approach to all of these things. You've got the rest of your life to go at. Don't do it all at once. Think of it as a child at Christmas, tearing into the Christmas presents. So you're a big pile of stuff, if you're fortunate enough. And you rip the, the, the wrapping off all of them and that's it. The anticipation's gone. You've opened all the presents. What's next? Be a bit slower. Spin it out, stretch it out, make more of it. Learn and feel the benefit of every degree as you move forward. But always don't overcommit. And what would your final thought be to any Freemason who is a Master Mason um, about how to be a happier Freemason with the power of Freemasonry? how to be a happier freemason how long have you got i mean that's a that's a, a huge question which i guess you've just thought of in, in the last couple of seconds um i i thanks for that i i would say that it is about pace it's about not dashing through things on a superfluous level imagine a, a stone being uh, skimmed across the surface of a piece of water yeah you're moving a long way you're moving at speed but you're not really getting to the bottom of things. You're not really understanding things. And you need to, as in all things, strike a balance. You need to make sure you've got the most from whatever you're doing in your Freemasonry and take on new degrees as and when you think it's appropriate. Um, you mustn't feel pressured into doing things. If you do, then you find that it takes the edge off it all. Uh, you people are leaning on you to do this, that and the other. And you step back and think, I shouldn't have joined that. I, I've, I've gone too far. And remember, you can you can't visit across degrees, but you can visit other craft lodges. You can talk to different people, you can get different experiences and you can form your own value judgments. Bearing in mind, of course, that you need to 
uh, do that in, in conjunction with your family. Uh, Freemason sh Freemasonry shouldn't be to the exclusion of everything else. Yeah. It's part of the tapestry of life and uh, needs to fit in with that. And if it jars, then it doesn't work and something will suffer. Stuart, I want to thank you for your candid uh, responses uh, and your honesty and frankness. Um, and this is, forms part of a series of videos called My Freemasonry Stories, which are being published by Lincolnshire, the Lincolnshire province of Freemasonry. Uh, Stuart, thank you for your time today. And if you'd like to watch any more of these, then uh, have a look on the Lincolnshire provincial website where we've got other videos like this uh, that you can watch. Thank you for your time for this. Can I just add one more point, please, Chris? <laughs> Not like you. Go on. <laughs> yes. Go, Go on. on. All I wanted to say was that if anybody is prompted now to think more about uh, joining the Holy Royal Arch, the way to do that is to look at any lodge summons. The, the Royal Arch representative's name should be on there. And when we get back, if we get back, when we get back to a meeting, look out for the guys with the jewels with white ribbons. Uh, they'll be members of uh, chapters, companions. You can have a talk to them and you can look through Chris's uh, My Freemasonry Stories as well. Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks, Stuart. You've been an absolute star. Bye now.